giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'll move on now to our next set of awards, uh, the Superlative Awards. So these awards go to the teams that, uh, independent of point totals, did some pretty notable things with their robots. Um, each of these teams will receive $100, and Mackenzie's going to kick things off for us with the Superlative Awards. So Mackenzie? Great. Thank you very much, Alyssa. Um, and so to go into our superlative awards, uh, the first one's to be for a uh, grant for $100 for your team next year. And so our first one is going to be for the first submission. So the first submission award recognizes that the early bird gets the worm. So the winner of this award was the team that was way ahead of the game. Um, to win this award, they submitted their design first and also submitted a complete robot and met all of the competition requirements. And so that team is FTC team number 7519, Cougar Botics. Um, they had the Mr. Assistant robot designed to support nurses in a hospital setting by delivering food and medication to patients. And so I really do just want to say thank you to this team. I know on behalf of Mark and myself, for sure, we were definitely stressing a lot once we sent out that submission form. Um, we didn't have any robots for a little while, a few days, and we were kind of getting nervous. And then that was the only submission we had for more than a week. So we were definitely getting pretty anxious, but it was great that we got a submission in. Um, and not only was it a submission, um, it was a submission that had actually done really well. It was a very well-rounded submission with some great, uh, with a great problem statement where they had some good statistical evidence that they backed up why that was needed, that they actually should be having these to assist nurses because of the current crisis going on and how many, how few nurses there are right now to assist and take care of these patients. Um, and then also just the technical aspect of the robot actually going around to deliver the trays to patient. They thought through how it would know which room to go to with having colored stickers on these trays for medication and food, and then having a color sensor that could then tell it which room to go to next. So all around, it was a great submission. Great. Johnny. Up next with the darn good documentation. Yeah, I, I, I love this one, Alyssa, because details matter and, and you got to be able to communicate things with people. And in the end, documenting your idea and communicating with other people is, is just so critical. So this was a great one to award and there was lots of great submissions. Uh, but darn good documentation, it recognizes a team that did a great write-up uh, coinciding with sort of the robot and the whole uh, submission. And um, the team recognized this award, included all the information that judges needed to understand the problem they're solving, but also they presented it in a very unique and elegant way. And, and I'll take you through some of, some of what this team did. So the winner of the Darn Good Documentation Award is, go to the next slide, is uh, FTC number 2142 G-Force. And this team built um, what they, uh, they call Merck, which is a multi-purpose emergency responding companion uh, robot. And it's a multi-purpose robot that for any emergency, whether it's fires or if in fact it needs to be uh, areas that need to be sanitized. This was a team out of Mumbai, India that did a fantastic job uh, describing um, the, the robot and also the purpose. And I think if you look at the slides, you can see they did a great job of graphically kind of giving you a high level overview of of kind of the system, whether it's the canister, the sensor, et cetera. And then in addition to that, they, they included some great information in terms of, they had the whole team go through and do a video that they included actually as a document inside of Onshape because Onshape allows you to have everything really as one container. And each of the, the, the members of the team shared kind of their perspective of the design and the areas that they worked on. And so a lot of detail, manufacturing information, bill of materials information, and uh, you know, literally you could take this documentation and go off and, uh, and build this robot. So a wonderful job to, uh, to Team G-Force and congratulations. Thanks, Johnny. Up next is Mark. Sure. So this award is for the Amazing Alliance. So this is for the team that, uh, the set of teams that work together. We actually have three winners on this one uh, that used uh, partnership in order to solve a real world problem through cooperation. Uh, you know, so often out there, uh, there's a really big problem and, and it's something that just one robot can't solve. And you actually need a system of robots to, to go out and attack that. I think you all know that from the, the first competitions. And uh, this is the team that really exemplified that alliance mindset and, and work together. So the winner of that, and like I said, there's three of them. So the first one is FRC 
F5962 uh, Persevere. So this is a set of three robots, the first one, uh, that is for a grocery delivery system. So Persevere Shop is the robot that actually grabs the items uh, from the shelf. And then that passes it off to the next one, which is FRC319, Big Bad Bob. Uh, so Bob319 is holding a box that takes the object um, from Persevere Shop. And then that stacks it on top of the next robot, which is FRC 8046, the Laker bots. So the Laker cart is an actual automated grocery cart uh, that takes those and, and moves around and, and goes and actually does the delivery of it. So a really cool system of, of three robots, um, you know, really move over Amazon Robotics. Like all three of those, they look very industrial. Uh, they're very cool. I love that it uses a milk cart. Uh, like that, that's just a common item that, you know, you wouldn't have to source. Like I think that's just a really intelligent part of their design. Uh, there's a really cool story behind them. They, they hadn't worked together a whole lot before. Uh, so they just kind of reached out to each other on social. They were all in open alliance. So they kind of knew of each other. Uh, and then they just got on Slack. They got on Google Hangouts. They weren't like located near each other or anything like that. And and, you know, when we created Onshape, that was one of the things that we really wanted to promote was that collaboration and, and sharing. And, and it shouldn't matter where you are. You shouldn't have to pass files around. And uh, I think this really exemplifies it is that this team just in a totally digital world uh, came together and they identified a problem together. And then they developed individual solutions uh, that would attack different parts of that problem. And I think it's only fitting that the amazing Alliance Award uh, is, goes to the set of teams that really specialize their robots to solve a big problem uh, with three different robots. So congratulations to those three teams. Awesome, great. Uh, Dave, the Awesome Aesthetic Award. Okay. So we'll wait for that to come up. So the Awesome Aesthetic Award is the best aesthetics. Um, uh, that team is the uh, uh, Beaverbot team. Um, and the Beaverbot team is FTC number 13601. Um, this robot works to remove microplastics from uh, roadways. The beaver, as everybody knows, is the engineer of the, uh, of the animal world. Uh, and fittingly, it's the mascot of both MIT and of Oregon State. Um, it's also the mascot of the Beaverbots robotic team uh, from Woodland High School in the great state of Washington. Um, the problem that they're trying to solve is about microplastics. And microplastics are tiny pieces of plastic that are broken down from trash in our oceans and rivers. Um, these pollutants end up not just in, in the water, but also in the sand on our beaches. Uh, they end up getting eaten by marine life and birds and work their way up the food chain and kill many thousands of animals every year. The Beaverbot robot helps solve this problem by actually roaming beaches and conveying sand into a three layer rotating barrel that separates the microplastics using fine microfiber meshes. So it's a very, very clever idea, a very, very unique design. Uh, one of the most unique designs we saw. Um, and in addition to solving an, an important environmental problem, it's also, uh, in my opinion, an aesthetically attractive uh, um, uh, design and uh, non-threatening. Uh, in fact, you could say it's kind of cute. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I think this is actually an important design consideration for, de for a device that may be roaming a public recreational area. You don't want to scare the kids away. So, so uh, the Beaverbot team has created a very functional robot bot that I think we can all agree is also aesthetically awesome. Great. Thanks, Dave. And congratulations to the Beaverbots. Next up is the Best Branding Award, Mackenzie. Awesome. All right. Um, and so for the Best Branding Award, um, while this is a technical design competition, oftentimes a product brand has much to do with the success of that product at this design. So the winner of this award really created a strong, strong brand for both their robot and their team. Um, and so we can take a look at what that team was. So that was FTC Team 213, um, Team Greece, 001. Um, so the Gaia robot helps collect pollutants, reduce the use of non-renewable resources, and improve living conditions of people and animals by planting trees. So it really has a whole bunch of functions with that robot. Um, and so in addition to making this really cool robot, 
in which they included some really awesome documentation. They really explained their problem that they were solving and what they did. Um, they also had some additional documentation that they included to really set themselves above and beyond. So they're able to brand both their robot and then as well their team. So Tyler, Tyler. I don't know if we, ha- yeah, yeah, I don't know if we have the um, documentation they had because it's really cool. I definitely love to show what they did. The next slide. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, so you can see on the left there, they had some really great um, diagrams they created for their robot that really showed what it did and helped the judges to better understand what was happening there. But then on the right, they also included a 78-page document that went through their team and their history. Um, Tyler, I don't know if you can hit play on that video because we can actually do a quick scroll through of it all. There we go. Perfect. Um, So yeah, just talking about their team history, it actually showcased some of their team members, which is really great to see who was actually working on these design challenges. And then it went into more of their research and more of why they chose the problem that they did and how that related to their robot name. Um, It was actually named after Gaia, who was the Greek um, mythological representation of the Earth, and just so much more information that really helped brand, again, their team and their robot and tie it all back to why they were solving the problem they were solving. Great. Congratulations, Team Greece. Such a beautiful branding job. Really nice. Um, once, this, once this thing's over, I think we need to take a road trip there and actually see that robot, right? Yeah. Go on site. <laughs> I don't know about a road trip to Greece from here, Johnny, but uh, I'll take a trip with you. <laughs> um, great. So next up is the down to the details, and that's you, Johnny. Great. Thank you. Well, you know, design and, and concepts are important, but, you know, it, as we know, to build things, uh, you know, details matter. And um, so adding detail, um, you know, really requires you to think about all aspects, whether, you know, it's nuts, bolts, wires, and as well as every drawing um, for every part. And this award recognizes a team that went way above and beyond and included all those details in their model and, and in their submission. It was really, really fantastic. So if we go ahead and uh, from the great state of Louisiana, it's uh, team number 2992, SSS Prometheus. And this robot was designed to lift and, and raise a companion robot and groceries to help the contamination and the spread of virus. But the thing that was amazing about here is all the, the gearing, the pulleys, and their bill of materials. And if you went through this whole whole design documentation, you know, it was not just the concept they were communicating, it was literally every part manufacturing drawing, every bill of material, they did costing. They did weight analysis throughout of, of, of where to source things. So it was really a fantastic job of, of really kind of taking a high-level construct and idea, all the communication information necessary to get the concept across, but then all the details to make it possible so that somebody can take this package and actually go ahead and ultimately build it. So congratulations to, uh, to, um, to our uh, team 2992 from Louisiana with SSS Prometheus. Awesome. Thank you. Next up is the On Shape Expert Award, which will be presented by Mark. All righty. So uh, in On Shape, you know, oftentimes to make a piece of geometry or to make a part, there's often a lot of ways to approach it. But uh, sometimes there's ways that are, you know, really efficient and scalable and they make your end design better. And we call those, you know, best practices. Uh, and the On Shape Expert Award demonstrates that expert knowledge of Onshape and uh, it shows that they really have applied those best practices and they end up with a really effective uh, living document. So the winner of that award is FRC Team 7461 Sushi Squad. So they've got a super clean robot. So Stogie is a portable uh, trash and debris collection robot uh, with the capacity to get at cigarette butts from out of uh, sidewalks, walk cracks. So really great design and, you know, what I want to talk about is the thing that they did that really showed them as Onshape experts. So uh, it's it's one aspect of Onshape that's pretty unique is that you can use a really simple sketch uh, as a master sketch, as we call it. That's a best practice that that's really helpful. And and what that you can see what they did was they laid out where the wheels are, where the chassis is going to be, roughly the height and length of the the arm. And then what they did was they used that sketch to kind of divvy up the parts and then they would make those different things along the sizing and dimensions that were created by that geometry while referencing that master sketch. So number one, that, that's really helpful just for you know doing space claim and, and actually building the robot you know in the first place. But then when you get to like late staged 
design changes. Like maybe the arm needs to be longer, right? You discover that uh, really long, really far, far into the process. You can actually go in and update that dimension on the sketch and then have things update accordingly. So, you know, we showed this to uh, one of the judging parts of the process was the Onshape um, technical team that helps our customers, that really they're Onshape experts and they help our customers be successful. They looked at this and they said, we wish all of our customers uh, knew how to model like this. Uh, it, it's it's honestly like such a good technique, and you could see in the end up in the design they ended up creating really clean, really great use of the mechanisms and and, and strong usage, all, all driven by that master sketch. So uh, excellent job, great use of best practices, and they are are on shape experts. So congratulations. Yeah, great. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, next up is our marvelous modeling award, and Dave will present that. Dave, you're muted. There you go. OK. Um, so marvelous modeling. Um, so part modeling is the part of the system that's used the most. It's one of the most fundamental aspects of CAD. And uh, this award recognizes the team that spent the time to create their own custom geometry and to create, use modeling, the modeling features of Onshape in the best way. The winner of this award demonstrates mastery of modeling through detailed design uh, and unique design of 3D geometry. And the winner of this award is FRC team uh, uh, number 1156 under control. Uh, and they created the Ocelot robot that's capable of, of detecting illegal disforestation activities and reporting them to the local authorities. Um, to jump into that a little bit, um, Team Ocelot uh, um, is an example of exceptional CAD modelers. Exceptional CAD modelers use the full set of tools at hand to accomplish their desired goals. Um, with their Ocelot robot, the under control team from Novo Hamburgo, Brazil did just that. Uh, their robot augments human efforts to control disforestation, disfor tough word. Uh, it's a, it's a um, robust semi-autonomous vehicle that is tough um, and small, small enough to travel into dense forest environments where it can send back photos and data on what it finds, um, including temperatures and other, and other data. Um, the robot contains over 500 unique parts and well over a thousand components. Uh, wow. This team used many, many on-shape capabilities. One thing that they really used to its maximum capability is sheet metal. Uh, they use sheet metal to design many parts of the robot, uh, including um, uh, custom brackets, uh, complex housings for the undercarriage gearboxes, and actually uh, a sheet metal enclosure for the entire robot. Um, but, you know, in section, exceptional modeling is not just about using complex features. More importantly, it's about using the right tools for the right job. Uh, by, by employing sheet metal the way they did, under control achieved three specific design goals. They made the oscillate much more affordable. Uh, they also made it much tougher, uh, which is important for the environment it had to work in. And they also protected the interior components of the robot, which again, it's a very tough environment uh, in, in a Brazilian rainforest and uh, uh, that was important. Moving on, they also used other uh, uh, modeling uh, expertise. Um, for example, kind of like uh, the last case, they used complex variational master sketches to understand and analyze uh, the performance and positioning of their gearboxes. And finally, they made use of custom feature script features um, to, con to create structural beam components for their design. And by doing so, they've shown uh, curiosity to explain functionality that's not just within core Onshape, but it's provided by the extended uh, Onshape community. Um, Finally, I'd like to send a, a shout out and a thanks to Jake Rosenfeld, who did a lot of the, who's one of our uh, our, our best developers, and uh, he did a lot of the legwork looking into these models. Uh, so he so he certainly helped out a lot, um, and actually did did the the the, uh, the the large part of the work. So thanks a lot, Jake. Um, he's also one of the creators of sheet metal. So he was certainly very happy to see this, uh, <laughs> to see this model. Um, so, so, uh, I'd also like to finish up by saying, you know, in their masterful use of sheet metal, custom features and, and, and master sketches, 
under controlled showed the qualities of great future engineers uh, and they're truly a team of marvelous modelers. <laughs> wow, congratulations, that's fantastic. Um, thanks Dave for that excellent overview and commentary. So our next superlative award is the feature script feat and Johnny will tell us a little bit more about the winner of that award. Great. So feature script, just, just so people understand, when we started on shape, this was sort of a day zero decision, which is that, you know, we knew that once we built on shape, we couldn't go back and retrofit and put feature script in it. It's at the basis of everything we do in terms of product development. And it's a very unique aspect uh, of on shape. And it gives people a ton of power because it's the same code that we use we make available for people to actually use themselves and to also customize and extend. And so the winner of the feature script award uh, has demonstrated sort of the best utilization and creation of feature script that improves the design of the robot. And, and we'll get into kind of what they did and why it was unique. So if we go to the winner, it is uh, team number 1836, the Milken Knights and the Aegis robot, which is a firefighting robot with a hose mounted uh, nozzle. Now on, on just sort of the outside of things, you can't necessarily see the complexity of this model, but inside what they've done is because they, they want to make this uh, a firefighting robot that could adjust to many different types of hoses that might attach to it, they actually had lots of different configurations. And then they actually took feature script and in the, in the drivetrain itself, they used feature script to actually automate many aspects of the drivetrain. So not only does it help you with a lot of the repetitive tasks you would normally use, which is sort of the basis of feature script and why people would be interested in doing it. But they also took a lot of the commercial off the shelf sort of components that they would use and they built configurations and they organized in such a way that they could share with other users as well. So not only did they do their own individual productivity, they set it up with their team so they could then allow other people to access and use that feature script. So a great use of, of, of automation tools to not only help their own design, but also to make it so that they could explore many different options. And of course, if they wanted to uh, share with other people as well. So, you know, our original vision of feature script was that people could take this basis and extend it. And it's so wonderful to see that, that the team number 1836, the, the Milk and Knights, really took advantage of it and gave us a great example of what's, what's possible with feature script. So congratulations. Thanks, Johnny. I love seeing these robots and just realizing how much more is going on than what you can actually see. There's so much more than what meets the eye. And when you kind of dig into the details and look under the hood, so to speak, um, it's, it's really cool to understand all that went into these models. And again, thinking about the fact that so many of you uh, didn't know Onshape or had never used it uh, prior to a few weeks ago it was super impressive and, and exciting to us to see what you're able to do. So we've got one more uh, superlative award to give away. This might be my favorite one, uh, one of my favorite robots, uh, and I'll let Dave tell us about it. Okay, so this award is the friendliest robot. Um, you know, everybody knows robots can be intimidating to a lot of people. Some people love them. Some people are a little scared of them. Uh, as a result, commercial robots um, will tend to be designed in a way to make them more approachable by humans. You see a lot of that going on in Japan today. Um, uh, the Friendliest Robot Award goes to the robot that only not only looks like it would do its job, but also, looks, but also would be pleasant to interact with. And that award goes to FRC team number 272, the uh, Cyber Crusaders. They built the Clarence APD uh, robot, which is an autonomous package delivery robot that can deliver packages and climb stairs. Um, and as you can see, uh, it's a very cute guy. Um, I think it's even cuter than the Beaverbot robot I got to talk about earlier. Um, uh, you know, googly, googly eyes always, uh, always uh, are a good thing. Um, this robot is named Clarence, as I said. Um, but Clarence is not just a pretty face. Um, he was designed by the Cyber Crusaders from Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Uh, he's designed to deliver multiple sizes of, of US Postal Service packages in a variety of, of household environments. Um, Clarence can even climb stairs. And the Cyber Crusaders considered several different approaches to, to solve that problem uh, and finally settled on a design inspired by Dean Kamen's iBot. Um, Clarence has over 100 unique parts and several hundred total components. 
The team used uh, driving variables and feature script beam and sprocket custom features to execute their design. Uh, the design, uh, this was a team that actually in their documentation was very good. Uh, this was a team that spent time at the beginning considering uh, very different design alternatives. Um, and, uh, um, and you can see that in their design, it wasn't only when you look at different aspects of the design, the symmetry, um, uh, it's, it's not only the eyes, but it's actually an attractive robot uh, in, in a lot of ways. Um, and that is actually a big design consideration today that, that's going on, is how to make some of these robots that are actually more personal um, and interact in people's personal environments more approachable. Um, uh, so because Clarence is both functional and fun, uh, the Cyber Crusaders deserve this year's Friendliest Robot Award. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Uh, just a little backstory there. We were debating on the name of this award, whether it was the friendliest robot or most likely to be taken home as a pet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just because it was so friendly and approachable. So great job, everybody. Um, we want to congratulate all of our superlative award winners. Uh, it was definitely a hard decision as it was with all of the robots, uh, but congratulations to you. The Robots to the Rescue Challenge on First Updates Now is brought to you by PTC. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan.